So my name is Riley Brown, and today I want to discuss, um, I'm calling this the TikToker's Guide to AI. I, I won't be talking about how to ethically um, deploy or use these AIs, because I've, I've been using them to make Kanye West deepfake music videos. <laughs> um, but uh, how did I get here? So I was messaged by this turtle character on TikTok. Um, <laughs> Klaus messaged me, I think it was in January, uh, when I first started. And he was like, hey, like, do you want to come to Norway? I was like, what? You want me to come to Norway? And uh, you know, we took us a few months, and we got it figured out. So um, yeah, I guess in October of 2022, that was when I first used GBT3, because I think I think a problem with like the GPT-3 model was that there wasn't like a clean user interface, which ChatGPT brought, and was kind of that consumer moment. Now everyone's down to try any type of AI tool because of that. Um, and when I first used it, I was like, okay, this is going to be the most viral thing ever. And I had a background in content, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make content around AI, and it was the most parabolic. It was just the growth in terms of like amount of people interested in AI blew up beyond belief. And then I tried mid-journey right after GPT-3, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna dedicate the next few years to this and see what happens, and it's paid off so far. Um, and the best way that I could describe it um, at the beginning was it, it's like playing with magic. It's, it's like an experience that I think it, universally people are just down to learn about it. Um, and so December 5th, I made this video, and this is actually currently the video on ChatGPT with the most views, and I made it 30 minutes before it was like publicly available to everyone, and this video has like 11 million views. But anyway, you guys have all seen ChatGPT, but it can write full essays in a matter of seconds. And once I made this video and it started going viral, I'm like, okay, I can turn this into a literal career because there's gonna be so many other tools. And since then, I've literally tried probably three to four tools every single day. Um, I've gotten very good at video editing, integrating the AI tools into video editing, and basically every type of tool. So I guess my goal today is to provide context around my favorite tools, and I've gone through, I think, in my database, 340 tools, and I've narrowed it down to my favorite 35, and I'm gonna be talking about my favorite 20 or so tools within that group. I wanna talk about people in the AI space that you should, I highly recommend to follow in terms of seeing like the cool creative tools that it can do, um, and then the history of the, of the past few months. I want to discuss that and the creative economy and how I think it's changing, especially in music and social media. So I've tried 350 tools and divided them into seven different categories. And those are video, text, productivity, research, image, audio, and automation. And I'm going to go through all these categories real quick. So the first is video AI tools, which I think I think the first period we've been in like a, we're in like a chat in terms of public adoption of AI. We're in a, a chat phase right now. We have chat GBT, everyone's excited for plugins. I think we're about a year away from literally typing what you want, like a full TV episode. Um, the trajectory just po points in that direction and I hope I can prove it to you. So the first tool that I've used is a tool called Synthesia, which creates an animated character just by typing. And so I have created this character named Steve, um, and it's just a pre-built character that's trained on this guy. His name is George in real life, apparently, because he reached out to me and wanted me to stop using him uh, because it was like, it wasn't professional. And I, I, yeah, and here, I'll show you a video example, and it's loading the internet. Um, I guess I can search it real quick. Or 
refresh it. Um, I'm not sure why it's not loading. But yeah, here's Steve. And as you can see here, I have a lot of videos. And I was using Steve, and he has over 5 million views. Um, and I was going to create a full-on character with him, but I decided to go in a different direction. But here is the basic premise behind Steve. Take a photo of your friend, make him 20 years older, and turn him into an astronaut. Take a photo of Zaza Pachulia and immediately turn him into a medieval knight. Maybe you want to turn Mario into a more realistic accountant in a suit. These four images took eight seconds to render, but let's say I don't like them. Just press this button here, and it will generate four more of them. This is Midjourney, and this app does by far the best job at creating AI-generated images based on reference photos that we give it. Let's do an example together, because it's somewhat complicated. For this example, we are going to turn Andrew from Big Mouth into a plumber and make him much older. Step one. Sign up for Midjourney and their app is directly in Discord. Anywhere in their Discord, you're going to paste the photo of Andrew. Click on the photo, right click and click copy image address. Go to a new line in Discord and use the command slash imagine and it will open a prompt. From there, paste the link to the image of Andrew and then simply click space. Now is where you get to be creative. You can type exactly how you want to see Andrew portrayed as. In this case, we are going to make Andrew an older, a more realistic and higher resolution plumber, and we are going to do it in eight seconds. And here is the result that we got. I like it. Anyway, I thought I'd play that because it's a foreshadow, because I do want to talk about mid-journey later. But I found it to be incredibly fun and easy to use these AI-generated videos to create content. And I think that ultimately is the future of creating content. I think it's going to get much easier to create fun, engaging, and educational videos, because that's the trend on TikTok. People think TikTok is just a bunch of people dancing, when really the, the, the best creators on TikTok are actually teaching people how to use and do different things. And AI is making it easier to create these. And we'll talk about how that whole process is actually going to be AI generated in the near future. DID is the next example. So this is an example of, you, uh, so previously you had to train a, a, a model based on a, a video of a person. So if that guy, George or Steve, uh, you had to, the way you create those avatars is you take 20 to 50 minutes of video and the AI trains it on them and that creates it. But with DID, it's a new technology where all you need is a picture. So this can be an AI-generated picture or a picture you find on the internet, a picture of you, anything with a human face, and it will actually animate it. And I go through that whole process right In about right 10 here. minutes, I created a speaking animated character with background music generated by AI and subtitles. And the script was generated by AI. All of it was done with AI. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. All right, I'll take over from here. The first step is to create your character. Riley used Midjourney to create me. This is the prop that he used. And notice the Q2 at the end. This is a parameter that creates a higher quality image. Once he had the image, he needed the words. He went to chat GPT and wrote, rewrite the man in the arena, but make it satire on how being the man in the arena is actually lame and stupid. That took one minute. Then he went to well said labs to generate the voice. This software is a little expensive, we'll but just look up free text to voice websites and test them until you find a good one. Simply paste the text in and get audio out. Then with the audio file, he went to a new platform. This platform is DID.com. Simply select the image of a person and select the audio track and then click generate. And finally, he went to Ava. And that's the basic premise is you literally need a picture and you need a voice. So just an audio file of someone talking and it will automatically animate the character's face in the tone or in a way that makes it look like he's speaking. And it's a very convincing animation, in my opinion. And a lot of people are doing some really 
uh, funny things with this. And I thought I would stop here and give an example of, of DID. And so, for example, um, I got a photo of Klaus uh, yesterday, and so we can actually go ahead and create a video. And so we're going to use this photo here, and all we need to do is go to Eleven Labs, which I'll be discussing later. And this is a tool where it is text-to-speech. So you can use any voice that you, you want. So it comes with a preset of like six or seven voices that you can use. However, um, and this goes to ethically, um, you know what? I, it, <laughs> um, so basically, I got a bunch of audio samples of Donald Trump. Uh, we have Dave, like uh, Dwight Schrute from The Office. And if you upload, I think, and the time frame is getting shorter and shorter. It started out where you needed five minutes of them talking. Now with the new models with Microsoft, all you need is about three seconds of their voice, and you can actually replicate someone's voice almost nearly perfectly. And there's a lot of scams with that, but I'll talk about that later. Um, but here, let's go ahead and for the sake of fun, let's use Donald Trump's voice. And we can come up with, anyone have an idea for what you want him to say in the video? Um, we can say, this AI conference is going to be huge. Um, it will be a great conference. Wonderful. Um, and we will, and it, it's sensitive, to, it's, each sentence I found is actually better when you like do a dot, 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 if you want actually like more space in between each sentence. And there's some things that you can learn, little tricks that you can learn about creating um, the most realistic sounding voice. But we can generate it. And you see here, it should take. This AI conference is going to be huge. It will be a great conference. Wonderful. <laughs> and so there's Donald Trump's voice. So all you do is download it. And obviously, I could um, punctuate it better to get the, the right pacing for what I'm trying to say, but all you need is that. And so you come back to DID, and all we have is this photo of him uploaded. We can upload the voice, and you, um, we'll go like this, um, downloads. Um, here it is, I believe. So picture plus voice, and we'll make sure that this is the right one. This AI conference is going to be huge. It will be a great conference. Okay, so now we will generate that video. And we'll give it a second, we'll let it create. And it's, it's pretty crazy to me how quickly uh, it, it's getting faster and faster. In the beginning, to, like right when DID came out, to do a 10 second video would take four, five, six minutes. Now it'll do a minute video in 15, 20 seconds. And this AI conference is going to be huge. It will be a great conference. Wonderful. <laughs> and yeah, so, so even already, with just those two tools, you can already, um, as a creator, as someone or, or educator or anyone who wants to communicate anything, and maybe you're introverted, most people are introverted, um, you can add things to your tool chest to make content educational, online, um, and I think it's really cool. And that's only a tiny fraction of the possible tools that you could use. So let's keep going here. The next one is Wonder Dynamics. And so this one is one that I actually just got on the closed beta. And so this, is, this gives you a glimpse into the near future of CGI and video editing. And I'll just show this I'll show this trailer first, actually. So it's basically drag and drop. So if you take any video of a person doing anything, you can choose any 3D model and just drag it on the character. And this takes a, a while. This takes three to four hours to fully render the video if it's, I think if it's a minute long. Rightfully so. Like, it's literally completely replacing the character. It knows what's behind the character, and it creates a completely realistic view of this. So it's a skateboarder, and they literally, you drag and drop this robot character onto the skateboarder video, and it can completely change the video. 
Here we have a surfer. And you can add any 3D character on top of it. And so these ones, I think, are the coolest. The, like, it's, it's, it's mind-blowing how crazy these tools are getting. And uh, here we have another example um, of one of my buddies who created on, on Twitter. He uploaded a photo of him and three friends watching a soccer game. And they replaced two of the soccer players with these animated characters and two of his friends with this animated character and this robot. And for me, I think, I think the, where this is all heading is and we're going to talk about text to image in a bit. Um, with Midjourney, you're able to create any image, but we're soon going to get text to 3D. And that, that's where they're moving, is it's going to create an image, and then you're going to be able to click create a 3D character of that image immediately. And you're going to get a, a 3D character. So the future of video editing is shoot a video, and then type in what character you want to do you want what character you want that person to be in the video, and it'll be replaced. And I think that's really, really cool. Moving on, Kyber. So this one is one that went in, this guy went, this video has like 15 million views, and I'll show you this one, and we can do an example of this one as well. Wake up. And so here's a, a clip of a YouTube video that I did with Kyber for a more marketing purpose here. So I'll In show less this. than 10 minutes each. I'm going to make a Nike ad and an Adidas ad. I'm going to show you both of them and then I'll talk about how I made them. The first one is simpler. The second one is actually five different videos clipped together. But let's watch this first six seconds of this ad real quick. So obviously it's not like a real ad, but on Kyber you can upload any image and you can describe what you want to happen. So I typed in a shoe becoming an eagle in the style of a simple tattoo design. So I was thinking maybe it, a lot of advertising is just short four or five second clips. And I think this was literally the week that it came out, and it's actually gotten better since then. And an Adidas but you can see it, it's slowly more. And then morphs. I'll talk about how I made them. The first one is simpler. Seconds of this ad, real quick. And it rotates into it. So I just thought this was a cool concept. This is a shoe becoming an eagle in the style of a simple tattoo design using sketch lines, black ink. I really like white backgrounds. I was messing around with this all last night. The white backgrounds creates just kind of an ink pattern and it tells a story more clearly. What happens when you take a bunch of these little clips and put them together? And this is an Adidas ad that I made. In that end, when the video starts, it like broke off into the, the pen ink, because I think the prompt was turn this into a pen ink style video or something along those lines, and then it kind of dissolved into basketball players, and, and you can create these very abstract things, and then at the end of the video, I just put it in reverse to kind of create a loop back into the Adidas thing, and someone in the comments of that video were like, wow, to create animations like that, it used to cost thousands of dollars, and we're getting closer. I'm not saying it's going to replace this, like, animators, because I think that there's some very skilled animators out there, and I think that the animators who are utilizing these tools are the ones who are just doing the most insane things. And so that concludes kind of the video section, but the thing is, it's, it's just impossible to keep up with all of these video tools. And I have a lot of sympathy for people in the video editing space who's trying to keep up with it, because by the time you learn something, you all, a new thing is coming out. And this is something I put in the presentation this morning. So this was the announcement that Google is going to be partnering with Adobe 
for augmented reality video. The physical and digital worlds are colliding. And it's not just Space Invaders. Adobe and Google have teamed up to democratize AR. All right, let's get hands on and see how this actually works. Let's say we wanted to create an AR experience at the actual Google I.O. venue. I simply type it in and there I am. I've got the 3D model of the amphitheater right inside of Adobe Aero. Then I can start dragging in content very easily. Let's take this T-Rex and take some time to actually nicely align it with the terrain. Wow, okay, that looks pretty good. You can see it's also gonna occlude the environment since we have a sense of the geometry around it. Let's drag in a satellite because 3D maps and why the heck not. Okay, that's already looking great. Next, I wanna imbue it with interactivity. So I can trigger an animation on the T-Rex with just a couple clicks and do the same for the satellite. And there we go. I've got an intuitive AR experience ready to publish without writing a line of code. And you know, this is like these types of announcements completely shift the possibilities within any given domain, whether it's chat, whether it's writing, or whether it's video. And there, these announcements are becoming every single week. And it has created a lot of stress for a lot of people, and also it's also a lot of fun. Um, oh, finally, this is Runway Gen 2, and Runway is actually out of the AI companies that emerged out of this, this is the one with the, the, the largest valuation. It was just valued at $1.5 billion. And this video was generated literally by typing. So text, they texted, or they typed in drone footage of fields or something along those lines, and this was the video that came out. And this is rapidly progressing. This came out three to four weeks ago. fully imagined this video, like it, there's no, there was no reference image, there was no anything other than typing. And it's fully unique, it's not basing it off of any other video or image. Um, these models are just getting so good. Moving right along. So text AI tools. These, um, I am a huge proponent of, I just use ChatGPT for everything. I've been trying to switch and use a bunch of different text tools because my job, and I create about one TikTok every single day. So I'm covering news and I'm testing out new tools on AI. I'm trying to make content every day and I'm trying to gather a bunch of information and turn it into engaging content at the end of the day. And text tools actually help me summarize things. It helps me just like, I have a whole system I set up and I'm gonna talk about that in Notion. And based, the main takeaway is I've tried alter, alternatives to ChatGPT and I don't think any of them come close right now. Um, I think Claude is very good. Um, but some of the things I've been doing are, um, I, I've been doing this, I'm, I'm doing this project right now where I'm actually taking videos of other creators. I find creators that I really like, and what I do is, on YouTube, you can actually go to any YouTube video with, uh, with speaking in it, and it's under here, but you can actually download the transcript, and when you download the transcript, you, you can just ask it to summarize it. And that was one, actually one of the really cool things with ChatGBT is you can actually summarize videos now. Um, and then I'll ask, I'll ask it to analyze the tone, uh, the, the sentence structure, and kind of the strategies they use to make it a compelling video. And then I'll take an article and ask it to summarize the key ideas and, ne and then rewrite a TikTok script using those same principles as that person. And it helps you analyze it. And it also helps you realize that a lot of the things people are saying on YouTube, TikTok, are just AI-generated scripts, which gets... Um, it's interesting, and the worst part is with Eleven Labs, these videos can become fully AI generated. Um, and so, yeah, so I don't want to spend too much time on the text tools because I'm sure you guys are, are the most familiar with those. Um, productivity tools. So Notion, for example, I, I was just explaining this whole process. Let's say that we go to, I think I actually saved a link here. Um, let's say we have an article that we're looking at. 
uh, there's this tool for Notion. It's called uh, the Web Clipper, and you can just save it to a database just with one click. And for those who don't know, Notion is by far, in my opinion, the best like note-taking tool app, and they have a very well-integrated AI system into it. Um, it would take me two, three hours to actually explain <laughs> why I think Notion is so good. They just have basically every feature that you could want all wrapped into one. Um, and whenever I save a, whenever I save something, it goes to this uncategorized database. And once I add a date to it, it goes to my main database, which is down here. And we can find, um, let me click today. Oh, I searched something. So this is where it goes. And when you save an article, it should save the text immediately. And so if I'm going through, if I'm reading four, five, six different articles in a given day, and I just clip them, uh, I have all of it here. And so you can actually directly at the bottom of any article, you can hit the space bar. And so ask AI to write anything, summarize the following article in five bullet points. And then with tools like Zapier, which are no-code automation tools, which will be integrated into plugins, uh, what a workflow that I'm working on is actually automating this whole process. So anytime I web clip something, Zapier will automatically trigger this process to happen and send to some central, uh, central sheet or even text it to myself or create some sort of central hub for all of the news for every single day. And that is kind of the next phase for me and what I'm going to be doing over the next few months is learning how to automate these processes. But yeah, I thought I would definitely bring up Notion because I think it's just powered my productivity as a content creator a ton. Another direction I think AI productivity tools are going to go is less file-oriented and more automatic tagging-oriented. And I don't know the, the science behind this. And remember, I don't view myself as someone who's technically sound with, with AI. I, feel, I look at myself like a gamer of AI, where gamers might not know how to build video games, but they're good at video games. And that, that's, that's kind of the way that I, I, I see it, because I think that so many people get lost when using note-taking tools like the whole organization process, you don't really have to do it with my mind. And that's the next tool I want to talk about. Um, when you go to my mind, um, you can, in a very similar fashion to Notion, you can save things to your mind with one click. And then it creates auto tagging. So no matter what platform it comes from, and they're adding video tools where it will automatically get the transcript and the tags from that video. So let's say you saved 1,000 or 10,000 different things. You can search it immediately. And this helps me, again, stay up to date on the AI space because so much of the announcements are through Twitter. Um, I can save it, and I can see here, like, let's look up Runway uh, ML, and then I can see all of the tweets that have to do with, with Runway. And I just think this is a really cool tool. You can add notes and create different spaces. So that's one that I think is incredibly useful to use. Uh, the next one is Rewind. And so this one, this one is, and I would actually love someone's opinion here on like the security measures of this tool, because this tool records everything that you do um, and stores it locally on your machine and you can ask it questions. And I'm just gonna play this video here that I made. Command shift one. What was that email that I was looking at earlier about Wonder Dynamics? And can you also write a reply saying thank you? The email you were looking at earlier from Wonder Dynamics with the subject, please confirm your email address. It appears it was related to a closed beta program and the product, the email was sent to you on Saturday. Here's a draft reply you could use to them. Thank you for the Wonder Dynamics closed beta invitation. Dear Wonder Dynamics team, I hope this email finds you well. And you can see here, and if you click right here, you can see exactly where you were when you were looking at that email. And again, you can look at what you were looking at before and after. So there's what a full timeline of everything that you're working on. And this only works with like Mac M1 or M2 chips as of now. But that is, it's just, it's crazy to me. Because again, this is where it feels like magic to be able to ask your computer, hey, 
do you remember that thing I was looking at earlier? Or um, can you find this specific thing? Or, or bring up all of the instances where I was talking about a presentation. Um, and I just think that is just, it's just fascinating to me, and I, I love it. Um, and yeah, and so that, that's where I think this, this everything is gonna go. I think the future of just even like a photo folder, and I think Google Photos is already doing it, where you can start to search for any, you can go to Google Photos and search dog, and it will bring up all the photos of your dog. And I think it's gonna get better and better at that, and even with notes that you type out, I think it's gonna move in that similar direction. Um, okay, so now let's go to image tools, because the rate of progress in text to images might be the most astounding. And you can see here, like this is, I think about a year at this point when Midjourney started. And so Midjourney is the number one, uh, the number one image generating, the number, number one AI image generation tool on the market right now, and I don't think it's close. Dolly 2 came out, I remember I first got access to it in April of 2022, and people were like, oh wow, this is pretty cool. Midjourney has been that massive consumer moment where you can create insane images. And you can see this is version one. I believe this is about a year old. Version two, version three, and version four. Um, for a little bit better example, these are the types of images that you can generate now. And we, I actually wanted to um, do an example. So Midjourney currently, um, and I can't remember if I put a slide for this, as of two weeks ago, they had 12 employees and they, had, they have the biggest Discord in the world. So they had 13 million users. I believe 9 million were paying users, and it's $30 a month. So just a team of, seems like a team of like 11 people in their base. They started, they just moved out into like an actual office space, and I believe they're going to expand, but it's amazing what they can um, just accomplish with a small group of people. And they're also training their, their image generator with these images because people are saying thumbs up or thumbs down on the, the, the generated images. But it's as simple as coming to a mid-journey bot once you're a subscriber and you type imagine, and then you type literally whatever you want. In the beginning of mid-journey, there was this idea of like prompt engineering for AI images, and there was like the order of the words mattered a ton. And that's slowly going away, and they're slowly optimizing for just standard English sentences or whatever language sentences you want to include. And so, like, you can say, a man, let's say a um, photorealistic robot standing in the forest. No, actually, let's go a robot giving a presentation at an AI conference. And then you can do things, you can add these little things, like you can change the aspect ratio by, by typing dash dash AR, and then 16 by nine, let's say you wanted to use it as a YouTube thumbnail, that's the, the aspect ratio. And I'm gonna copy this before I enter it, and then you just press enter. And while I do that, uh, I, I like to copy them because I like to make multiple variations of it. So then we can, get, we can change photorealistic while that one's loading. We change it photorealistic to a water color robot giving a presentation, right? And then you can change this one to a 3D render, um, a 3D render of a robot giving a presentation at an AI conference. And we'll, um, and then we can go like that, and you literally can just type, imagine, and then let's make it a different background. At an AI conference, we'll say dark and gloomy background. And you see here that these were the four images generated a photorealistic robot giving a presentation at an AI conference and I have it set for automatically for quality two, which is a higher quality image, and you can see here it is a robot talking at an AI conference, and you press these U's here, or, um, oh, and here's the photo color, 
these are kind of cool. Like this, <laughs> these are, they're, they're interesting at the very least. And th when this first came out, I literally for the first, for 10 hours straight, I was just on here trying to learn how to create different images. And then the future of this and what Midjourney is working on right now is taking these images and turning them into a 3D model. And I just think it's, it's very cool. And you can see with something like Wonder Dynamics, you could take that 3D model and basically import it into any video. And the way that I look at, I just think of all of these AI tools as building blocks for creativity. And if there's one thing you could take, if you want to learn mid-journey, this guy, uh, Nick St. Pierre, is easily the best teacher in terms of I highly recommend just following him on Twitter. He just does these massive tweet threads. He talks about blending. He talks about all these different things where you can actually take a photo of you know, two different people and blend them together. Um, and it's, it's very interesting. And he just teaches you all different types of tools. And he's, he's a design expert. So that, that's what makes it um, so interesting. And I've already talked about this. Uh, 12 employees, and they had 11, paying, 11 million paying users in their Discord. Um, and these are some more AI-generated images. And we've already discussed this a little bit, um, but there's some audio tools that I find to be just incredibly useful. And so right now, there's becoming more and more AI tools for, for audio. And for example, I think I have a video. Yeah, so here, this was a video that I made, and I actually wanted to set a challenge for these. So I made five different videos in an hour. And I went through that whole process of finding piece of information online, summarizing it through, through that Notion page, and I have a, a template for, to write a script on ChatGPT. It's like, take this information, now write a script with an engaging hook, don't do a long intro, one sentence only, um, you gotta work for retention on TikTok, and this, it came out with this script, and then I used the script, pieces of the script to generate images. So on, on Midjourney, for each like five, for each little part of a sentence, I dragged it or I pasted it into Midjourney and had it generate an image based on that. And this was basically the video that came out. This video on TikTok has 1.7 million views. McDonald's has caused shockwaves with the recent launch of its fully automated restaurant, complete with machines to take orders and prepare food, and completely transformed with an automated arm delivering orders placed through a phone app. Jeff R commented. It might actually get my order right. While Greek Fire raised a valid concern, asking, but who will the customers jump over the counter to fight when their fries are cold? However, it's important to note that the introduction of automation at McDonald's is not expected to result in job losses. As Jesus pointed out, this is so gonna get looted. McDonald's will likely need to increase security in response. Despite the new technology, the robots will not be taking away human jobs. I'm a robot, and in 28 minutes, I wrote this video, created the images, generated the voice and the subtitles. Anyway, yeah, and, and that was with a, an earlier version of Midjourney. That was in the first month that I was creating content, and they literally, that was version three, and they're on version five, and version six is coming out, and they just tweeted today that it's going to get 50 times better, whatever that means, and it already looks indistinguishable from reality. Um, okay, now for a very controversial topic, AI music. AI music, especially in the United States right now, is going through this massive oh shit movement right now. So um, let's, let's, okay, so what if I told you one year from now it would be easy, as easy, to create a Drake song as it is to create a Drake meme. And this was what captured the entire internet. So this guy, um, he went by Ghostwriter12997 on TikTok. He had zero followers and just a brand new account. He posted this song of, he had like a, a, a sheet over his head with these glasses. This is him right here. And this is an AI Drake song, and he claims to be an old ghostwriter who was screwed out of deals where he wrote songs for famous people and ended up making no money off of it. And he, he's branding it like, okay, here's my revenge. And he created this song. Bumping just some beer, but a fever and love. 
she know what she need I need she blessed ain't giving my best okay I don't know how to okay Anyway, so if you don't know, if you don't listen to Drake, and I know I'm in a different country, I don't, I don't know what type of music you guys listen to, but it, anyway, if you looked at the comments in this video, Drake had released a song previously, and Drake is the biggest artist in the United States. Like, he is as big as it gets. Like, he's going to be a billionaire in the matter of a few years. And um, people in the comments were like, this was way better than his previous song that he made. And so immediately he had his record label go in on every single platform and take everything down. They, every single video with AI Drake uh, was taken off of YouTube. And then this was the kicker, and this is what's happening as we speak. So there's an artist, Grimes. She used to date Elon Musk. So that gives you a, a sense of, of like, I don't know, her temperament, I guess. Um, <laughs> And so she said, I will split 50% royalties on any successful AI-generated song that uses my voice. Same deal, uh, that would go with like an artist collab. And she basically put up a website where any person can, and they, it's like an open, it's, she's like open sourcing her own music, which is very cool. Like on one hand, I side with Drake, I think that he should have I think of it like a logo, like you can't just go out and create shoes with the Nike swoosh with, you know, a little squiggle at the end of it um, and call it Jike or I don't know, anything like you can't make a slight variation of it. But on the other hand, I think artists who do this are going to build such a large brand because as we've seen in the language model space, open sourcing things can actually be very beneficial and she's aligning her incentives, and I couldn't find the tweet. I, I tried to add it in here, but she basically said yesterday, she said, like, it is such a crazy feeling to see her community, her fans, creating songs that are better than hers, and she's, she's like, embracing that, and I think that that is kind of the next wave of artists. Drake doesn't have a distribution problem. Drake, when he puts out music, he's heard, but some of the artists who are in the middle they might want to empower their community and make them millionaires. And I think that there's so many people out there who would want to create a song in their basement and hear their famous artists or their favorite artists sing them in concert. I think that's a, a really a compelling idea uh, at the very least. And I just wanted to kind of, as we approach the end here, talk about some other creators. And I think that um, there's so many really cool people who are making cool content and offering courses, uh, like in the, I believe McKay Wrigley has taken Twitter by storm and he's basically using, he's turning Siri into Jarvis on his computer, like actually, and I'll, I'll play a, video, a few clips of his videos here. So check out how much better a GPT is compared to Siri, so let's start with Siri. What is the Drake equation? Here's what I found. Okay, I don't, can you guys hear this? Maybe not. All right, last week I demoed the initial version of my GPT Eyes project. This weekend I hacked together a much more interesting version. So I'm gonna demo that for you now. Um, keep in mind that this AI will, it has no prior knowledge of anything. It will only get information from the camera, see all these boxes doing object detection, and from the information it can search on the internet. Uh, and apologies, I think my fridge is a little bit loud, but that's gonna come into play here. So let's run this. What can I help you with? What is the keto diet? So we asked, what is the keto diet? I'm oh yeah, I was supposed to skip to one minute on this one. Here we go. All right, I wanna know if I show you food that I have, can you identify which food is keto? Sure, show me your food and I'll tell you what is a keto food. So I'm gonna just show it my fridge. I've added a bunch of this stuff to my custom data set. So if I just like through, through here and give it a good glance at some things, it should pick up um, what I've got in here. And when I turn away from the fridge, it's gonna know that we're not looking at the fridge anymore and it should be able to process this. So just give it a sec, it should be identifying this shortly. Okay, processing. Okay, so it did identify, we're done. So it identified that he's light. holding up food but to the camera. That's the most recent thing I added, so I'm okay. So it's gonna go and search the web and figure out what's keto and what's not. 
It looks like you have steak, spinach, butter, avocados, and lemons. Those are all great keto foods. Okay, here's and uh, one thing I've been following very closely, and I think that we're going to move in June. Apple's going to be making announcements around their AR headsets. And you could see earlier with the Google and Adobe partnership, they're focusing on augmented reality. And I think ultimately, augmented reality and virtual reality, from my perspective, just from someone who looks at like the consumer space, I don't think people were quite ready for, for VR for sure, just putting a TV on people's faces. I think people wanted to do that way less than people thought. Uh, but augmented reality and being able to create things in the just like in the room right here, if we could create it, I think AI is going to unlock so much because as these uh, language models become multimodal and they can actually recognize what everything is, what you're looking at, it can create suggestions. And I think that is kind of the next wave, in my opinion. And then this is another creator that I highly recommend following. Uh, this is Aaron, uh, a local ghost on Twitter, and he's actually building Apollo, where it is basically chat GBT that goes directly into your ears. And I'll just play one video from him really quickly. Visual things can be hard to describe if you don't already know what they are. Let's give chat GPT the power of sight by combining it with computer vision to have it answer questions about something we're looking at. What's this building? This building is at the Young Museum in San Francisco, California. What's inside? The De Young Museum houses a collection of American art from the 17th century to the present day, as well as international art and textiles. When is it open? The De Young Museum is open Tuesday through Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to 5.15 p.m. By using text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and Azure's computer vision services, we can give ChatGPT a voice and eyes, allowing it to have context on what we're looking at and what's around us. This proof of concept uses... And I think that these are just going to be plugins into ChatGPT very soon. And I think that we're just in for a very, very interesting experience. So to close here, um, I believe that there's, there's a common perspective where all of these tools I've showed you are, are AI tools that you can use to, to become more creative and to kind of share your thoughts with the world. Savvy people, people who are really good at coding right now, are using these to iterate on them so quickly and generate so many videos and basically use algorithms based on how many views that each AI-generated video is getting on social media, generating videos that are similar to that one across all niches. I've met YouTubers. So I've met one YouTuber who has 29 YouTube accounts, and he posts twice a day on all of the accounts 21 of them are profitable. I think 10 of them are netting over 50 grand US dollars uh, per year. And so, you know, you extrapolate that. What if he has 1,000 YouTube accounts? And then what if 10 to 1,000 people are doing that? The entire internet, all of social media will become AI generated. And there are some people who think that it's going to go completely in that direction. Personally, I believe that that will be a repellent to the young, like young people. I don't think they'll think that's cool because I just think we're so mimetic. People want to connect with humans. And so I, I definitely don't think it's going to go fully in that direction. But in the near term, we're going to be in this period where I just think social media platforms are going to have to either ban AI-generated voices or like heavily um, cool them in the algorithms. Um, and yeah, so like that's the basic, the basic strategy is to scrape the internet, like the way these creators are doing it automatically, scrape the internet, centralize that information, right? Take information from around the internet. As more context is allowed, you can scrape all of Reddit. So you can go to a, re a subreddit, scrape all of the, the articles, and you can actually understand the culture behind um, any given topic, maybe it's skincare, and you can go in and you can see what language people who are into skincare, and you can create a GPT-4 prompt already, where it's like, okay, take, use the common vernacular that they're using, and you can create compelling scripts. So you can do that automatically. You can use Eleven Labs to generate a voice. Um, you can generate a video using Runway, or you can create, you can generate images automatically on Midjourney. And there's already scripts that are available on GitHub that will just pull those into Premiere Pro, create the video, render the video, post it on YouTube, and we're, that is how creative people are 
automating their workflows, and I'm seeing this as I'm talking to more people across all industries with a bunch of different tasks. And that's kind of the basic premise behind auto GPT. But um, yeah, and so a lot of this is overwhelming for people. And so I guess in the future, if you wanted to follow along with what I'm doing, I'm going to be focusing more on clarity as opposed to just showing people crazy tools and going for views, because I think ultimately we're at a point where there's so much excess information and so much noise in, on social media that it's just hard for people to comprehend, and eventually people are going to give up. So I'm going to be creating six databases, building a website, and so I'm going to be focusing on the history, uh, the news, the people and perspectives, so people who have perspectives about the future, skills, opportunities, and tools. And I'm already building a Discord and community around my audience of around 400 to 500,000 people. And yeah, I'm going to have some fun with that and see if we can build a really productive community centered around that. And that's kind of what I'm going to be spending my time on. Uh, but anyway, uh, Claus, I really appreciate you um, inviting me here to do this. And this is a lot of fun. And yeah, thank you.